What is not a defensible position is the idea that this was simply a refugee camp that was targeted with the intent of killing women and children. You probably heard about um, uh, Jabalia, the refugee camp there, right? There was a strike. Okay, so that's probably what you've heard to begin with. Now, let me ask you this. In your mind right now, take just a second. If you're on audio, actually take a second in your mind's eye. I want you to picture what a refugee camp looks like. Okay, what do you think of? All right, now we can bring up, do you think of something like this? All right, most likely. Mm -hmm. Or do you think of something like this? This is the refugee camp we are discussing in Jabalia. No, oh, a city? Yes, a city. A city. A, a city, like a, yeah. An, an yeah. apartment block? Yeah. It's, it's bigger it, than the Chaz in right. Seattle. Yes, it's compar comparing, uh, comparing, for example, a homeless tents in Austin in a park to the Upper East Side. So <laughs> let's contrast that to well. begin with, right? You've heard about this refugee camp, uh, or most likely you can ask me, I, 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 I'll ask you, you can comment if you have heard about the refugee camp in Gaza. So let's set this up. Yesterday, the IDF claimed responsibility, which right away should tip you off because they said the hospital, that was not us. They said this one guilty for striking the Jabalia refugee camp in Gaza. But even if that uh, uh, Hamas commander was there amidst all those Palestinian refugees who are in that, in that Jabalia refugee camp. He looks like Colonel Israel Sanders. Israel went yes. ahead and, and dropped a bomb there, <laughs> attempting to kill nice this, Hamas, uh, this Hamas, Hamas commander, knowing that a lot of innocent civilians, men, women, and children, presumably would be killed. Is that what I'm hearing? That's not what you're hearing, Wolf. We, again, were focused on this commander, again, who you'll get more data who this man was, uh, killed many, many Israelis. Uh, we're doing everything we can. These are, it's a very complicated battle space. There could be infrastructure there. There could be tunnels there. Uh, we're still looking into it, and we'll give you more data as the hour moves ahead. Now, just to be clear, everyone here is saddened when innocent life is lost. Just to be clear. Mm -hmm. And I do get that not every single person in Gaza or Palestinian is uh, supportive of Hamas or wants to eradicate all the Jews as their uh, representatives who were elected do, just to be clear. But it also does matter when you have one side using human beings as human shields. Again, you think of a refugee camp, you don't think of a major city with shops and bodegas and convenience stores and whatever their equivalent written in that Arabic right to quick trip is. <laughs> Probably it's still quick trip. It's the, probably seven. The stop and rob. Yes, the stop, stop and rob. <laughs> stop and rob hijab. Now it's, it's a franchise. So uh, the me, the media, it's a of course, grab and blow. Media, Twitter, <laughs> they were all flooded with videos immediately claiming that the IDF indiscriminately murdered. Some of them claiming deliberately murdered innocent women and children. Here's how they painted it. Part of the Jabalia refugee camp, among the largest and most densely populated in Gaza, now turned to rubble. The latest target of Israel's relentless air campaign. Israel dropped five bombs of no warning. The United Nations says. is saying there is nowhere safe for Palestinians right now. Anyway, that says the Ministry of Health, 400 Palestinians, mostly women and children. There is nowhere safe. It's almost, almost, uh, some Jews feel like there's nowhere safe when you have a government saying our goal is to eradicate all Jews. Mm -hmm. Yeah, was, I, what's that security blanket? Yeah, it's like, oh, can I just, you know what, I'll just go on over here. No, 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 that's still in the eradication zone. <laughs> Where is not in the eradication? No, eradicate means everywhere. It's all mine. Well, There's what? no what's mine is yours. It's what's yours is mine. What's mine is mine. Because you are a Jew. So, Pierce well, Morgan. when your old rubble looks just like your new rubble, yes. it's kind of hard to tell. <laughs> <laughs> Did you renovate in here? Yeah. 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 Oh, same rubble. This is this is uh, I guess this is modern uh, rustic chic. That'll be that'll be rebuilt by next week. <laughs> it's contemporary Arab world since forever. So I get we're talking about Israel, okay, and Palestine, the whole thing. It's not a real country. All right. So Pierce Morgan also forcefully uh, condemned this action, writing Israel deliberately bombing Gaza's largest refugee camp, even if a Hamas commander was there, is outrageous and indefensible. Okay. So what do we know about this refugee camp? All right, well, here's a couple of fast facts for you. Number one, this was a refugee camp established in uh, 1948. Uh, it was established after Egypt conquered Gaza during the 1948 Arab-Israeli War. I said Gaza because I was still in 
Pierce Morgan mind. Gaza, <laughs> Gaza, Hamas, Gaza. So the Jabali refugee camp, okay, established 1948 after the Arab-Israeli uh, war. Okay. These aren't refugees. The context here, what I'm trying to tell you is fleeing Israeli airstrikes. Okay. It's located just two to three miles uh, from Gaza's north border. Is right. that the uh, area where the uh, Israelis told everybody to evacuate like two or three weeks ago? Right. And so Israel okay. sent some warnings to the south. They have been sending so, warnings. But no warnings. Five bombs, no warnings? But needs to, well, you need a warning then. You, need, you, need, you gotcha. need to do continual warnings because that's what people do in war. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You need to be... We were doing it wrong. Yeah. Well, it, now you need to have your own Paul Revere on retainer for the other guy. <laughs> And nowadays, the, the rules Jews of engagement. Are coming. The Jews yes. are coming. <laughs> <laughs> that would be best if your Paul Revere is macho man. And like, hey, listen, I gotta tell you something, Kate. Yeah, the Jews are coming. They're bringing hellfire with them with the macho man. Yeah, the Jews are coming. Yeah. All right. Here's another key fact, okay? Uh, the camp, the refugee camp, is completely indistinguishable from the rest of the city. Here's an aerial picture. Showing how the refugee camp, showing oh my exactly goodness. how it blends in with the rest. Even the media, they can't agree on what the borders of the camp actually are. Wherever the bombs fell. Yes. <laughs> it's pretty easy to me. And the, it's an urban environment. Again, you would think refugee camp, you think tents. No, it's incredibly densely populated. It's about 82,000, 82, give or take people per square kilometer. To give you context, New York City is about 10,000 people per square kilometer. Wow. Dang. So you need to keep this in context. Well, we're, Okay, if terrorists are setting up tunnels and rockets, and they're doing it in an area where there are as many women and children as possible, again, this is war. Do you, do you allow them to kill your women and children, or do you go after the terrorists, and I'm sorry, but collateral damage unfortunately results with women and children because they're firing their rockets deliberately using women and children as human shields. Look at those maps. That's where they picked. That's where they picked to set this up. And the media just right away, this is completely indefensible. I disagree. I don't think it's completely indefensible when you understand context. Here's another key fact. Uh, this has been a target, this refugee camp, for the IDF since the very start of the war. The IDF has claimed that Hamas, their leadership, have used uh, Jabalia to shelter themselves, to hide. Now, there could be bias here from the IDF. That's why I ask you, what sources do you think are reliable? Now, I tend to, I tend to, when Hamas, IDF, or government of Israel, I tend to give more weight to the government of Israel. But I, I do certainly do not think that they are unbiased. But it's because Hamas, you know, they brag about murdering innocent women and children. So it, it's not that much of a stretch when the IDF says, by the way, they're murdering their own women and children. We do know also, according to Al Jazeera, that this refugee camp was used for Hamas activities regularly. Here's Al Jazeera in 2014. It says, Gaza's internal tunnel network is reportedly even more complex than cross-border routes and involves multiple branches that run under refugee camps uh, in Khan Yunus, Jabalia, other densely populated areas. They hide weaponry and they are designed for Hamas leadership to remain protected and mobile. This is from Al Jazeera in 2014, which means this has been going on since at least then, where it was not up for debate, because you know Al Jazeera really wants to paint them in a more positive light. Here's a Hamas <laughs> terrorist giving uh, a Russia Today journalist, and by the way, I, just so you know, I'm glad that Rumble allows Russia Today to be on their platform, because I want to hear what Hamas terrorists have to say. That's the beauty of freedom of speech. That's the beauty of being representative of all of humanity, warts and all. Here's a Hamas terrorist giving a Russia Today journalist a guided tour of those tunnels. Okay, so here's the thing. If you think it's indefensible that any type of strike results in the death of, 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 of women and children, that is a position to hold. I understand that there are people who believe that there should be no war ever whatsoever. However, what is not a defensible position is the idea that this was simply a refugee camp that was targeted with the intent of killing women and children. How do we know? 
from Hamas's own representatives, from Al Jazeera, from every source that we have available that lets us know that terrorists were there. I get now, could there be a middle ground? Could the IDF have said, nah, you know what, there's probably another way to extract this person, but who cares at this point we're past hitting the F it button? Maybe. But that's the danger of going out half cocked with very little of the information and not providing historical context. All the references we will make available for you at Ladder with Crowder.com. Link in the description. Comment. But you, a, a, you ask at the outset, what is your picture in your mind? My mind immediately goes to these people using women and children all the time. I, I never accept their explanation because it is not a matter of opinion. It's not bias. They've proven themselves so. Yeah. I, mean, I, don't, I don't understand why people still believe that. They're lucky they didn't get a Moab with tunnels that strong. I don't know if people believe it. I think we've reached, you know, there used to be, the, the argument used to be people believed uh, that they weren't using women and children as human shields. Uh, and what I see from the left now, they're not denying it, but they're saying ceasefire anyway. You want yeah. to believe that yeah. it's not true. It's like. No, I think they're accepting nature. the premise. I think they're going, sure, oh, yeah, they, they use they them are. as women and children as shields. And sure, they do do that. And they're terrorists. But you know what? Ceasefire anyway. I saw I, someone arguing the other day about that. They were, were saying, if, a, if, a, if somebody kidnapped your, uh, kidnapped your mom and had a gun to their head and you were a cop. Would you still shoot and kill your mom? And I was like, that's a terrible, like they're just accepting that they're using human shields and they, st they still shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when they use when they say things like we value death more than you value life. I mean, come on, folks. Watch Ladder with Crowder live Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern.